In this video, we we'll use Inkscape to trace a simple two-color logo and create an SVG file from a PNG or a JPEG file. We'll start by inserting our PNG file. We'll start by inserting our PNG file. We can do this by simply dragging and dropping the file onto the workspace and choose Embed. You can also go to File and Open and accomplish the same thing. As you can see, the image is very large, so we'll zoom out by pressing the minus button on our keyboard. The minus and plus buttons on your keyboard will zoom in and out in Inkscape. And I'll hold control while I grab the corner with my mouse and adjust the size of the image. That will keep the perspective of width and height equal. And now with our image selected, we'll go to the path menu and select trace bitmap. And the important settings in this box will be colors. We will deselect smooth. We'll leave stack scan selected and we'll select remove background. We're only dealing with a two color image, so we'll move the scans down to two and click the update button. Remember your image has to be selected before you click update or nothing will happen. Now, as you can see, the image doesn't look like it, our source image. So I'm going to increase our scans by one until I get it to look like it. If you have trouble doing this uh, and you get up to maybe 10 or 12 scans, but you've only got two or three colors in your logo, the problem is probably the quality of your image that you're working with. If there's a lot of pixelization and shading, Inkscape is going to see that as all different colors. So it really has to be a defined, sharp image that's fairly high resolution to do this. I recommend images that are at least 500 by 500 pixels or larger, ideally maybe 1,000 by 1,000 to work with. And as, as I mentioned, no shading or pixelization works best. And now that we have our image in our preview that looks just like our source image, we're going to click the OK button. And the Stop button will go active for just a split second and then go back to the OK button. And now we can close this box. And even though it looks like nothing happened, it actually created our vector on top of the original image and we can drag it to the side. And our original image in this case, we can get rid of it because we no longer need it. Now with our image selected, we can go to Object, Ungroup, click off of the image, and then click on it and drag it to the side. And now with our image selected, we can go to Object and Ungroup. And now we have to click off of the image so that nothing is selected. And then we can click on it and drag the layers apart. And as you can see, we have a solid layer and a sort of a frame to work with. And in this case, we don't need this one because we can create everything we need from this frame. And now I'll go down to the bottom on our color palette and I'll select, in this case, old gold. And I'll select our fill bucket. Make sure nothing is selected when you're changing colors and selecting your fill bucket. We'll choose the old gold color. And you really want to zoom in on the areas that you're filling so that there are minimal gaps left around the edges. And everything you fill must be on the uh, screen you're working in or it will not fill properly. And now with those two areas filled, I'm going to go back to our selector tool. And as you can see, these are two separate objects now that are filled with old gold. I'm going to hold my shift key and select both and then go to path and combine. And now we can drag that to the side for the moment. Just as if you were layering with vinyl, it would be very difficult to place layers of material exact and get them in there. So we really want a solid background with this on the top layer. You want to layer your material generally from the outside in as you go up, if that makes sense. And so in order to do this, we can, we're going to select this object and then go to the path menu and do break apart. 
And then with leaving everything selected, not clicking on anything, we're going to go back to path menu and go to union. Union is very similar to the weld function in design space. Combine is very similar to attach. And now we can drag our top layer back over and just kind of eyeball where it goes. We'll select everything and go to object group. And we'll save this as a plain SVG file. And now in design space, we'll go to upload images. We'll choose vector upload and we'll choose the SVG file we just created. And it looks good in the preview, so we'll save it and we'll insert it into our workspace. And when we click the go button to cut the material, you'll notice that we have two separate mats as we would expect. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.